بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. The word Islam comes from the Arabic root aslama, which means peace and submission. The practicing Muslim strives to submit wholeheartedly to God, thereby achieving peace in this life and the next. Submitting to God's will does not mean that a person need no longer think or that he must give up his free will to choose. Rather, like a law-abiding citizen, a person who observes God's commands benefits himself and others by respecting divine laws and using his freedom wisely. The Islamic concept of submission is thus an active one. A Muslim struggles to increase his knowledge, develop his character, and do what is right to the best of his ability, after which he accepts that the outcome of his affairs is ultimately in God's hands. Now, who are the Muslims? Think you can recognize a Muslim by dress or nationality? Think again. Almost one-fourth of the world's population is Muslim. And although some people mistakenly believe that all Muslims are Arab or vice versa, Arabs make up only 18% of the world's Muslim population. Muslims are found everywhere from West Africa, Eastern Europe to China and the Philippines, and they are establishing a growing presence in the West. Muslims come in all races and colors, are found in all professions and walks of life, and have made significant contributions to every field of human endeavor since the beginning of Islam, from science and mathematics to art and the humanities. In today's global village, there is no place on earth that they are not making an impact. Furthermore, despite media bias, the vast majority of Muslims belong to stable, loving families and have nothing to do with terrorism or other acts of violence. Islam is based on faith in a higher power, to the gracious Lord and creator of the universe, without family or partners called Allah. Muslims prefer to use the Arabic word Allah for God because it has no plural feminine or diminutive form that could be associated with idolatry, that is, gods, goddesses, or demigods. Although Allah is referred to as He, it is understood that God is self-sufficient and transcends both duality and gender. The 99 names of Allah mentioned in the Quran contain feminine attributes such as the compassionate, as well as masculine ones, that is, the Almighty. Allah is merciful and just, friend and guide, and the only one worthy of our worship, coupled with a universal code of ethics summarized in the simple maxim, believe in God and be good, is the natural religion of mankind. This religion, or way of life, in its diverse manifestations, has been taught by prophets, who were sent by Allah to every nation and tribe at some point in time. Prophets called people to a personal relationship with their Lord and set a blessed example of how to live. When people forgot or corrupted the message, he sent another prophet to restore it. The Quran mentions 25 prophets by name. Of these, five were especially great messengers. Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Each prophet received divine revelation, and some were given books of scripture. Muslims believe that Allah revealed Jewish and Christian scriptures in their original versions, but that their texts since have been corrupted. The Quran revealed to Muhammad through the angel Gabriel holds the unique position of being God's final message to humanity, and he has promised to preserve it intact until the end of time. Interestingly, scholars have verified that Quran is the only world scripture that has but a single version in Arabic, identical to the text that was revealed more than 1,400 years ago. It is also the only scripture that can be committed to memory by people of all ages, regardless of their native tongue. Although people are inclined to forgetfulness and sin, Islam affirms an overall positive view of man, who has been created as God's representative on earth, and teaches that faith and appreciation of goodness is inherent to human nature. Furthermore, children are born in a state of purity and do not inherit sin. Life's test is to do one's best and to resist evil in the world 
and within oneself, so that one can stand before Allah with a clean heart on the Day of Judgment. Those who are successful will be rewarded in Paradise, but those who have neglected their souls will be doomed to Hell. Each individual is responsible for his or her own actions and cannot rely on the goodness of others to absolve him of his sins. Although in the end no one can attain salvation except by Allah's grace, the normal prerequisites will be faith accompanied by good works that together weigh heavier in the balance than the wrong that one has done. Reward will be granted in proportion to effort. Paradise is a place of physical and spiritual beauty and perfection, where people will have their heart's desires and will be blessed with the vision of Allah the Most High. Now, what religious obligations do Muslims have? The first step is to declare with conviction that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. This is the Shahada, the first pillar of Islam. And when said before witnesses, it marks a person's entry into Islam. A sincere Muslim also undertakes to perform four acts of worship that complete the five pillars. Every believer should offer five prayers daily, at certain times of day, dawn, noon, afternoon, sunset, and evening. The obligatory prayers take five to ten minutes, engage body, mind, and soul, and are offered in congregation whenever possible. Regular prayers help one to establish a direct link with God and are a means of purifying the heart. They can be likened to connecting to a power source and recharging one's being. Group prayers, in which believers stand humbly, shoulder to shoulder, also help people to transcend false barriers of race, ethnicity, and class. The second duty is charity, zakat. Muslims are expected to donate a minimum of 2.5% of their net yearly savings to charity in the form of money or goods. This is collected by the community annually and distributed to those in need. The word zakat means purification and growth. One's wealth is not pure for one's own use until it has been shared with those less fortunate. Being charitable leads to spiritual growth. During the lunar month of Ramadan, the faithful abstain from food, drink, and sexual relations between dawn and sunset, and are also expected to control their tongue and temper. Meals are taken before dawn and after sunset. Fasting in Ramadan teaches self-restraint and empathy for the poor, builds willpower and God-consciousness, and is a time during which Muslims strengthen their ties with their community and their Creator. Every Muslim who is financially and physically able must visit Mecca once in his or her lifetime, during the Hajj season. The pilgrimage puts the reality of human life into perspective. It serves as a vivid reminder of the struggles and sacrifices made by the Prophets. It strengthens the bonds of brotherhood among the international community of Muslims who come from every corner of the world to join in this unique annual convention and it prepares the pilgrim for the profound journey that each of us must undergo from this life to the next. There are many other acts of worship that are recommended in Islam, such as offering personal prayers and supplications, reading the Qur'an, volunteering in service of the community, etc., besides which everything a person does with the intention of pleasing God is considered an act of worship. In contrast, there are things that God has prohibited because of the harm they endanger to individuals and society. These include lying, stealing, disrespecting one's parents, extramarital affairs, drugs, alcohol, gambling, and other destructive or unethical behavior. The guidelines for these commands and prohibitions are found in the Sharia, or sacred law, which is derived from the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad The Sharia is unique in that it provides guidance not only on religious matters, but addresses every aspect of life, including issues of social justice, politics, trade, international relations, family life, and even animal rights and the environment. Despite the negative manner in which Muslims are often portrayed by the media, 
Many people are surprised to find upon deeper investigation that Islam provides a solution to their spiritual, personal, and social needs. It offers a faith based on reason, free of superstition. It actively promotes racial brotherhood and harmony, and its economic guidelines encourage fair exchange between rich and poor, capital and labor. Its political system, in the original pure form, is based on a deep concern for justice and human rights, and it provides guidelines by which people of different faiths can live with one another in harmony. Furthermore, its model for family life offers an alternative to the current breakdown of the family in Western society and the ensuing social disintegration and chaos. The image of a healthy tree, evergreen, giving shade and bearing delicious, fragrant fruit year-round is a parable of a balanced Muslim. The source of this parable is the Qur'an, which says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alam tara kayfa dharaba Allahu mathalan kalimatan tajjibatan ka shajaratin tajjibatin asluha thabitun wa far'uha fi as-samaa tu'ti ukulaha kullu hinin bi idhn rabbiha wa yadrabu Allahu al-amthala lin-nas la'allahum yatadhakkarun A good word is like a good tree whose root is firmly fixed and whose branches reach to heaven bearing fruit in all seasons by the permission of its lord if we imagine that the tree represents a Muslim who is sincerely striving to embody Islamic ideals, then the seed of this tree is the Shahada. This affirmation of God's unity permeates and colors every cell, so that his every thought, word, and action is formed within the matrix of this understanding. The roots which nourish the tree and grant its stability can be likened to the articles of faith, belief in God, his angels, holy books, prophets, the day of judgment, and divine destiny. The trunk grows through faith in Allah and his messenger, which extends from the seed to the branches. Five branches represent the five pillars. They give the tree its shape and habit. Furthermore, the leaves represent Islamic manners and customs, such as greeting with salam, or wearing modest dress. They are what make the tree attractive and recognizable from a distance, and provide shade to other creatures. In the end, however, a tree's purpose remains unfulfilled until it bears fruit. The fruits of the tree are good character, qualities such as truthfulness, patience, courage, empathy, love, and compassion, along with all the other things that we desire in a friend spouse or colleague, namely the things that make us human.